All right, I'm gonna go through some portions of scripture that very plainly refute this satanic Calvinist heresy of predestination, and that God just predestinates and there's no free will. Uh, here are some three portions of scripture that really, really plainly refute this satanic false heresy. So the first one is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. Because Calvinists will say, God chooses you to be saved, you have no choice in it, it's just you're chosen to be saved no matter what. Okay, let's see how you get saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now the Calvinists, they contradict this by saying, no, God gives you the faith. Uh, it says you're saved by faith. How do you answer that? Because if you think that God gives you the faith when he chooses you, but then it says you're saved by faith, uh, you have a contradiction there. You see, the Bible is contradicting your man-made Calvinist tradition. And it's kind of funny, speaking of man-made, uh, your religion start, started by a guy called John Calvin, Calvinism. Kind of interesting you're following a religion named after a man. Kind of interesting. Uh, verse 10, here's a good one. In verse number 10, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Notice how Paul says we should walk in them. Because Calvinists still say that, you know, once you get saved, you have the perseverance of the saints, you're going to live holy automatically. Uh, Paul says we should walk in them. You know what that implies? It's our choice. We should walk in good works, but you can clearly choose not to. Paul is making that clear. He's telling the, the church in Ephesus, you should walk in good works, but that clearly implies you can choose not to. Next scripture is in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 16 to 17. Let's go there real quick. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17. Another really good one that debunks and makes a real problem for this Calvinist anti-free will, you know, perseverance of the saints, satanic, demonic nonsense. Uh, verse, number, uh, verse number 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that you, do, so you, uh, you cannot do the things that you would. Huh. You cannot do the things that you would, meaning that they're trying to live holy, but then the flesh is making a problem for them. Uh, kind of makes a problem for your whole Calvinist perseverance of the saints and this predestination where you have no free will. Because you see the people here, the church in uh, Galatia, they're trying to live holy. And Paul is telling them, you don't walk in the lust of the flesh. So if there's no free will, how come they're being... Have, okay. I'll put it this way, if there's no free will, how come they're having to be told not to walk in the lust of the flesh? Uh, what they just do it automatically, if God controls them, they just do it automatically. No, because they have the free will, and they're trying to live holy in this passage, and Paul is saying, you know, that you can't do the things that you would. It's clearly your choice. You can live holy by your own choice. God's not up there with, you know, some kind of, like you're like a robot, and God's up there pulling the strings like a puppet or something like that. No, you have the free will. He has to tell, he's telling them, don't walk in the lust of the flesh. It implies it's their choice. They can choose to walk in the lust of the flesh. And last scripture I have written down is, and there's a scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture that just debunk this satanic Calvinist perseverance of the saints and, and this uh, um, predestination. But here are some, these are just the ones I found the most strongest that clearly teach that you have the choice, the individual choice, to live holy, walk in good works, that you should walk in them, you know, do, you, if they don't, don't, fulfill, don't, eh, don't fulfill the lusts of the flesh, you know. Again, like, you know, if, if, it's, if God controls us and we don't have free will, how come we're having to be told not to do these things? God would just make us not do it. It's your free will. Colossians chapter 1 or 3, verse 1 to 3. It says... If ye be, if ye be, if ye, sorry, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are up above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Verse two: Set your affection on things above, not on things on on, on the earth. Verse three: But if ye are dead, or for ye, so for, eh, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Uh, again, Paul is having to tell the Christians here, the believers, you know, set your um, what does it say? Set your affection on things above. Uh, but according to Calvinists, that, that, that just happens automatically. So there would, be, there would be no need for Paul to have to tell them to do it. And, that, and them ha Paul having to tell them to, hey, set your affection on things above, it clearly implies it's their choice. They can choose 
not to set their things and affections above. I mean, again, Calvinism, it, it just makes, it kind of makes humans stupid. I mean, obviously humans, we are sinful. We have a sinful flesh. And obviously God is, God controls it. I'm not denying the fact that God doesn't control. God controls this world. But he does give us free will. We're not robots. You know, we're not, you know, he's not, he's not like some communist dictator. We're just like, you know, these robots that just submit to him or something like that. No. We have the free will. We can choose to set our affection on things above. Again, if you're a Calvinist, prove me wrong from the scriptures. Don't cite John Calvin or the uh, church fathers. You know, prove me wrong from the scriptures alone. They clearly teach it's your choice. He's having to tell them, set your things, set your affection on things above. If it's, if there's no free will, why is he having to tell them to do this? Because God would just do it for them, which is what Calvinism teaches. So those are the three passages that really refute this satanic Calvinist heresy of, of predestination and perseverance of the saints and the, uh, their opposition to free will. It's just, Calvinism is just a very satanic heresy. It comes from Roman Catholicism, essentially, because it's, it's a controlling heresy. They try to control people. And John Calvin was a murderer. I mean, he was just a, a butchering murderer. I mean, he was, he was wicked. He was, just, he was just as bad as the uh, Roman Catholic murderers in the um, Roman Catholic Church. Which is what he came out of. I mean, John Calvin was just a pay. I mean, yeah, yeah, he spoke against Roman Catholicism. He, you know, said some anti-Catholic stuff. But I mean, his uh, actions towards uh, non-believers, you know, heretics, which was true Bible-believing Christians, just as vicious as the Roman Catholic Church. So, anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. It's a uh, satanic heresy. I mean, considering the fact that the whole religion of Calvinism is named after a man, it's kind of a problem right there if you're a Calvinist. But you know, it's satanic. Anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.